Now, as far as canes go, I'm beginning to scrape the barrel. This is what I've got left, and I'm going to use these for the climbing borlotties. I think they might be a little bit short, but I think I'll end up just topping out the borlotti beans when they get to the right height. And then I've got cannellini and dwarf, and I think they're going to be okay with just small canes or perhaps none at all. So I'm going to get these in and position them and see how we go. So I'm going to space these about 12 inches apart and it's the first time I've ever grown bolotis so it's a learning process but I'm working on the basis that it's not that much different from runner beans. So that's two, four, six, eight. I think I'm going to end up with about 12 plants worth on this basis. The Greek Gigantes beans that I've ordered haven't arrived yet. And based on what's germinated, I think I might even be keeping them to next year. Uh, but we'll see. I may put in a couple just to see how they grow, what height they get to, learn some lessons from a couple of seeds and then build on that the following year. So one, two, three, four, five, six, that's 12 plants. And that one can go in the top and that'll be a job done. I'm gonna use plastic cable ties, not because I agree with using these, but I have them. And they're that small that they don't actually provide many uses so i'm going to work on the basis of using them up and then not buying any more of these again i'd rather have uh, some sort of string something that's a lot more ecologically friendly anyway i must say there is a convenience to these, but I just don't think it's worth the impact on the environment. And a little bit of extra effort with some jute or some string that's easily decomposed is the direction I'm gonna go in. If I use my common sense, I would put two at either end and then put the cross piece across and that way I can make sure I get all the heights right. So the Bellotti beans that I've put in the propagator have all germinated. Um, and I really want to get them out into the polytunnel, but there's another frost forecast for tonight down below zero. And so I'm going to keep them in the propagator for just another day or so. And I'm just trying to make sure they don't get leggy. So it's a case of playing against time. Right, let's get this cross piece across. It's going to be okay. I'm 
the seagulls around here are particularly vocal. We actually are not very near the sea, about probably an hour and a half. Uh, but the seagulls have populated this area because within about a quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile, there is a very large refuse pit and they do congregate around those for food. And that has begun to support quite a significant population of gulls, some of which have moved out and found their homes in residential areas. And this is one of them. Right, there we go. So we'll just put a couple of straps around those. And that'll keep the cross piece in place. Now I figure we won't be putting the blotty beans out, much like the runner beans, until the end of May, if at all possible. Um, it will be a case of how leggy they get as to whether I'm forced to put them out. If they get too leggy and then you plant them out, you only want to have a windy day and you can really wreck them. So they're looking pretty good at the moment, not too long. I resisted planting them early and now I'm grateful that I did. It's always a game of playing against the weather when you're growing things. And last year I got a bit caught out with beans that were too early. And this year, at the moment anyway, I think I've got it about right. That's the last one. And this last cane, which was a little less than strong, I would say, I'm just going to put in as a side piece, just to give it a little bit more rigidity. Now these cane structures, if you create them in this fashion, these diagonal sign pieces actually make the world of difference. They're the difference between blowing down on a windy day or not. So I would really recommend them. It adds so much more rigidity and that'll do for the climbers. So these smaller canes I have, I'm just going to finish off the row and they'll serve as markers as much as anything. I don't think the dwarf beans really need them, but it will help to stabilise them if we have a windy day. So this is a bit of an experiment. These are main crop potatoes, rooster, the red variety that are great for roasting. And they're nearly 12 months old in this bucket now. I'm starting to see some growth through. And what is interesting is I didn't cover these and you can see the difference in the old growth that's turned black from the frost and some new growth that's come up might even be today so the frost and potatoes really don't mix but what I'm going to do with these is turn them out and see 12 months on what's in here so we've got some potatoes 
that they're rooted and chitting, but we're going to use them. I can already tell that there's not a great many in here, but there's enough for a meal or maybe two. And I think if I'd left these any longer, they wouldn't have been usable as potatoes because there would have been so much root and growth on them. Well, they keep coming. They tend to be in the top third, which sort of indicates that maybe I didn't plant them deep enough. Most of them are pretty small. So we're getting down to the last few. And this compost, like all my compost from here on in, is going to be reused, regenerated somehow. I use a variety of methods, um, testing using the chicken manure and adding various feeds to see if it succeeds. And I think we're just about there. I won't put that back into the compost. It's really not very usable but the bulk of what's left in here will be and can be used again. Oh, there's an escapee. One more tranche through just to make sure. No, I think we're about there. And we've got ourselves a couple of meals. This is a job that I've been putting off for a very long time. This is a self-seeded hebe, which is a shrub. And this old bay, I've tried to keep going for a number of years and it really is now past its natural life. And what I'm gonna do is take it off at the trunk as low as I can. I thought of taking it out of this pot, but on closer inspection, it's very rotten. It's a wooden container. And I think if I try and force this out, it'll just break into pieces. So in the interest of just keeping this shrub going, which is reasonably nice to look at, we've got a fern in there and some lilac. I'm gonna just take it off at the trunk. Well, the good news, is that everything survived another night. We got down to minus 1.6 last night, uh, but all the coverings seem to work. Um, looking at the seedlings this morning, they've certainly not done well over the last couple of days. I wouldn't say they've been harmed, but um, I just get the feeling they need a feed. So I'm gonna get some plants out today because the temperatures are forecast for a continual rise over the next seven to ten days so there are a range of plants that can go out i'm thinking beetroots any more brassicas probably the, the um, broccoli and the remaining broad beans i think so what i'm going to do today is to add some of this seaweed extract to the water that i put around the polytunnel this morning and see if that gives everything a bit of a push. In the meantime, I'm gonna take this fleece off because I don't think I'm gonna need it again. Hopefully, fingers crossed, and get it packed away.
sort out in the polytunnel. But before I take you round, I just wanted to show you this little visitor. Which I think is a smooth newt and a really good sign. They are predators that can keep down slugs and various small pests. So good news. So it's mid-May polytunnel tour time and I've done a lot of organizing and moving around this morning mainly driven by the fact that I've been able to take plants out ready to plant up in some of the beds so that's made me enough room to start moving towards a final layout and just reorganizing what I've got in the polytunnel so that I'm ready for the next steps. So down here are crops that I don't feel comfortable putting out just yet. So I've got the celeriac, monarch and prins. I just feel like I can wait a little bit longer. They're in pretty substantial pots and I therefore don't think that they're going to come to any harm staying in here. It's definitely still too early to put out the runner beans and I can wait there not growing particularly fast which is good news and I'm just glad I waited as long as I did. We've got the parsnips in the corner that are just getting their first set of leaves and early days for those. I don't want to leave them too long because I don't want the main tap root to really get crunched up at the bottom of the toilet rolls. And then I've got backups for Romanesco, um, Giant Collie, and 120 day broccoli. So they're all together in a batch. Up here I've got the flowers. I'm still feeling like they're a bit early. We've got the sunflowers from the sunflower uh, competition. And they're all a bit bendy. So I think I'm going to need to start thinking about stakes for them. Got some nice calendula plants that have come on well, a few cosmos, and a couple of batches of sweet peas. These are still fairly immature seedlings. So here's the Bellotti beans that were germinated in the propagator. I've brought them over today because I just don't want them to get leggy in the propagator. And I'll probably cover those tonight even though the temperatures are not supposed to be below more than about four or five. This is the kale, the Toscana, and the uh, Russian uh, red kale. And then in the back, I've got some more Swede because of the problems I had germinating. Um, I sowed some more giant collie, not really sure why, because I've got plenty, um, but I keep them going. And this is some Calypso um, coriander, which to be honest, is not doing very well. Looks like I got it a bit too wet. We had a single germination really, one with a seed head on. These polystyrene cells, I need to pot up or do something with now. So we've got broccoli, that's the 60 day broccoli, the, the uh, fast one and I might use those if I don't have enough. We've got some Calypso which needs to come out and I think I'm going to end up putting that into pots because the single one I put into a bed um, was eaten overnight and I think I'm going to need to keep that out of the way of slugs. A batch of lettuce which really is in hindsight unnecessary. Some white Lisbon spring onions which I'll easily utilize and some rocket uh, again I'm going to add that into various places. The chives, bit of a disaster. I think I might get four or five, see if I can save those. These are backup tomato seedlings. I am going to use uh, one or two of these um, because they're the competition for the large uh, tomatoes. So I've got a Brandywine, a Dixie, a Suddaths. Um, so we'll see how they go. And this is the aubergines. So I'm going to pop the aubergines up uh, very shortly. I bought some more of those halos, um, some red ones, so I can uh, distinguish them. And 
Then I've got a row of squashes and pumpkins. And I'm a bit worried about these. Uh, this is the small sugar from indoors, brought outdoors, and it's looking very pale and weak, as is this one. This is a luxury pumpkin, which is sown in here. Not many of them germinated, but this one did, and it looks really healthy. This is the only munchkin pumpkin um, seedling that I've got. Uh, none of the others germinated either in the propagator or in the polytunnel, so that's an important one. We've got a couple of winicky looking courgettes there, which we really don't need to worry about because these that were sown in the polytunnel have done fantastically, and there's two, four, six there. This is the um, common sweet basil, which I sowed uh, pretty early on, and it's doing really well. Um, so I'm pleased with that. I can add that to my stock of basils that we're trying. And then my cucumber in the corner is a bit of a disaster. I've got one more cucumber left, and I'm beginning to think that I might need to sow some cucumbers and some pumpkins just to get me some backup position in case these few fail. And I have put them in the ground before and suffered from them turning yellow and becoming unusable. The rest of this bed, the spring onions and the lettuce is just doing fantastically. We're harvesting the lettuce almost daily, sharing it with the chickens, sharing it with the neighbors and eating plenty ourselves. And then the carrots are really starting to pick up now. Uh, definitely have a little bit of green fly, but I'm trying to manage that on a daily basis. And I think they're gonna do just fine. And I've been able to spread out the tomatoes. This one, which will be the aubergine, will move from here. But we've got two, four, six, eight Crimson Crush and two Moneymaker. And then I'll probably put the additional tomatoes that I'm going to grow, the beefsteak ones, uh, maybe one at the end and probably a couple in here when I move all these on. So the polytunnel is looking good. Um, I think it's only right that I share with you my disasters and I've got a few and we'll go and have a quick look at them now. So here you can see munchkin pumpkin, nothing. Luxury pumpkin, nothing. Blue squash, um, blue hubbard, nothing. These were the um, tomato seeds that I sowed in the polytunnel uh, for the competition and the mortgage lifter ones didn't germinate. A small sugar, not germinated, same. And these are my own small sugar saved seed, which didn't germinate. We've got a courgette here, which has just disappeared. And a whole tray of turnips, which didn't come to anything. And then finally, Prinz celeriac, sown in the propagator, and then brought out to the polytunnel which was a backup position and just wasn't worth doing really. Uh, all the celeriac that I sowed in the polytunnel did really well. I'm beginning to come to the conclusion that starting seeds in the polytunnel is by far and away the most successful way of getting a strong plant. And there are a few exceptions, peppers, starting onions from seed and maybe a few crops that need the warmth to germinate um, but generally it works perfectly well and things come on nicely in the polytunnel i just need to be quite patient the strawberries are doing well um, this second batch not quite as good as the first i think getting an early start seems to pay dividends, but there are a good few now that are fruiting and coming through as strong plants. And there are a couple that have got a bit of a late start, really. Um, these 
doing really well. And you can see we've got some sizable strawberries on them now. And we're also getting some runners thrown out, which is interesting. Um, but there's a really good crop brewing in here. And this one's starting to turn red, which is nice to see. Um, the smaller pot here, again, this was a later one, um, just starting to flourish in some places, but not as good as these that I put in early. And so there's a bit of a lesson there. I think getting them started early seems to be a really good idea. They get rooted and then when the warmer weather comes, they're really established plants. So out in the beds, my thoughts are that I can plant out quite a bit of the vegetables that are reasonably hardy. So I think the turnips will be fine now. Um, we've got a bed of beetroot to do and there's three varieties there. Uh, this is the swede that has been successful and I'm quite happy putting those out. Over here we've got the quick heading broccoli and a couple more of the uh, golden acre cabbage. So they'll go in there. And the other plants that I'd be quite happy to put out at this juncture are the sprouts, which are coming on nicely. Now the bed's ready. And that leaves me in a position where if we did get a cold snap, I'd be happy that the plants that I've already had out for some time would survive it. And the fleece that I've got left that I would use um, on those can move to any of these if I'm feeling that they're a bit delicate. Uh, so quite a lot of planting to do today. A little bit of sowing on those missing courgettes and pumpkins and squash. And overall, a nice bright sunny day and the temperatures are on the up. was a marathon planting session but it feels really good to have got there. I'll have a quick look round and show you what's in place. So the sprouts are in, the spacing in the end I went for five in a row and three rows. The ground in there is very firm indeed which is absolutely perfect for Brussels sprouts. So I'm pleased with how that's all turned out. And the beetroot, the plants are fairly small. Um, I need to keep those well watered, but I'm sure they'll get stuck in and get going. And the best of all, sweet. I was just a couple short. So we'll either have a couple come through from those that I've sowed, or we'll put something different in the end. And the turnips, we've got the white turnip and the purple turnip and again a bit of space at the end which is no problem we've always got something we can put in and we've got a quick heading broccoli the 60 day and nine plants gone in there and later on in the day i may well put some eggshell down just to protect those from any emerging slugs 
and all in all a mammoth planting session but it feels really good i do hope you enjoyed the video today if you did click the subscribe button click the like button and if you want updates from me each time i upload a video click the bell and select all I do hope you have a great day Diochenbach